I'm children's author Josh Langley and I am about to meet an amazing fellow children's author illustrator Katie Stewart and you're going to get to meet her too. So thanks to Healthway and the message go for two and five fruit and veg. Have you had your cauliflower broccoli and apricots today? Well you should. So let's sit back and let's get to meet Katie Stewart. Katie Stewart how are you? I'm well, thanks, Josh. How are you? I'm good. Look, I love talking to fellow kids' authors. Now, you're an author and illustrator. You've just had your new book released, What Colour yep. is the Sea, through Fremantle Press. Let's start yep. off. What is the book about? It's about what colour is the sea. <laughs> it's about... <laughs> well, it's blue, isn't it's it? a little koala. Yeah. <laughs> little koala who... Ask the question, what color is the sea? And uh, his friends all give him a different idea. So he just, she, so it's a she, I keep forgetting it's a she. She goes to the sea to see what color the sea is. And of course, over the day, the sea changes. And she sees all the different colors that her friends have told her about. But then she decides she'll take some sea back with her to show them how it changes. Oh, when she does that, she discovers that the sea is no colour at all. Oh, okay. So, so it's 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 really it's, it's an it's a journey of of adventure and discovery, isn't it? And and learning for yourself. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, why did you choose a koala? Ah, uh, oh, I don't know. Koalas are cute. <laughs> Everyone loves koalas, don't they? They are cute and they're so cuddly. And but sometimes they sleep a lot, don't they? They, you know, the idea they of a koala do. going on an adventure. My koala but... is very unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like. Okay, okay, I like the idea of a koala because I wish I had a koala. I would just carry it with me everywhere, and it would sleep, and it wouldn't be annoying. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it might be a bit scratchy. Yeah, true. They've got they've got those claws that want to hang on. Very sharp. Oh, yeah. Now I believe. What Colour Is the Sea, this is your first book that you've had traditionally published, but you've written books before. Tell us about them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wrote some fantasy novels. Mm -hmm. The first one was for my eldest son because he was being teased about not being good at football. Oh. And, yeah, he was, he was definitely not good at football, but he was a computer nerd. So I wrote this book about a little boy who is given a computer game and when he turns it on, he goes into the game and everyone in it is people he knows, including the two kids who've been bullying him and they're little goblins who wear pink tights. Which I thought was <laughs> sort of a... Katie, how did you get published by Fremantle Press? What happened there? Um, I had a few meetings with uh, the Society of Children's Book Writers have a thing each year where you can talk to a publisher about one of your books and by coincidence both times I went I got Kate from Fremantle Press. Now what does Kate and do at Fremantle Press? She's the children's editor. Ah so she gets to see all these amazing kids books so and, she gets and picks them and every, stuff. Every book anyone yeah so so she knew my name and I just kept sending stuff to her and eventually she liked one. <laughs> so, and that was the one about the koala, so. Wow. Now you're I right. I think he likes koalas. <laughs> ah, see, ah. Now you write and illustrate. So yes. what, what, how do you do your illustrations? Is it, is it on the computer or do you, do you paint them or draw them? What do you do? Um, for the last seven or eight years, I've been doing them all on the computer. So mm. I have a what's called a Cintiq tablet, and I draw on that. Oh, okay. Okay, because I must admit, I, I, I use a tablet for my own pictures as well, and it, it's, it's so much easier because I know that if you, if you draw like on a piece of paper or something like that, you have to scan it, and then it gets a bit complicated. But yeah. if you can do straight to a tablet and straight to a computer... It makes it so much easier. Yeah. Now, where it do you does, get yeah. your ideas from? Because I know that 
so many people oh. get ideas from so many different places. What about you, Katie Stewart? Yeah. Where do they come from? Do they drop out of the sky? Everywhere. Yes, basically they do. In the middle of the night, usually. Three oh. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so what do you do? Do you, you, wait for ages? you write your idea down? No, I just sit and lie there and mull it over for hours. I get much sleep that way, but yeah. Okay. And then I'll get when I get up in the morning, I'll write it down. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it can come to you in the middle of the night, this great idea. Yeah. So how did yeah. the idea for what colour was the sea come to you? Did that come at three o'clock oh, well, in the morning? One. No, that was different. That was way back in the dark ages when I was a teenager. We lived in Albany. And we lived in a house that overlooked the sea. And I was just standing there washing dishes or something one day and thought, isn't it funny how the sea keeps changing colour? when it's only water. And that, that idea stayed in my head for years and years and years, and then gradually I made up a story to go with it. So. Yeah, that's, a, that's really interesting, because I think a lot of people, when you look at the sea, you instantly think, oh, it's just blue. But when you actually really yeah. look at it, and like on a cloudy day, it can be grey. On a bright sunny day, yeah. it's bright blue. Or, or if you go further, different parts of WA or somewhere around yeah. the world, the, the ocean is a different colour. It can be like a really... Yeah sort of like an emerald green kind of colour or it could be deep blue or it could be almost a really dark, dark, dark blue. So I can see what you mean, how it changes colour and that would have inspired the book. Yeah. So where do you write and illustrate your stories? Do you have a special room in your house? I'm, I'm assuming where you're sitting might be there. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Um, okay. It's just an old, it's, we, when we came to the house first, it was a very small house with lots of veranda around it. And we've gradually closed the veranda in. So this ah. is, it's only about six feet wide. So it is, is, is it air conditioned? No. Oh, so. But if I leave, if I leave, I've got two doors. If I leave them both open, it sort of comes through. Oh, okay. So. Okay. So what comes first? Does the story, does the writing come first and then drawing the pictures or do you do, draw the pictures first? What happens? It varies. Um, sometimes I'll write the story and then draw the pictures, but sometimes it will just be a picture in my head, and that's right. where the story comes from. But I might ah. draw four or five pictures before I actually draw the, write the story. So, ah. yeah, it varies. Okay. So, for example, with what colour is the sea, the story came first, didn't it? Story came first on that one. Yeah. Right. So you, you would write the words and then you would go back and you'll put the do the illustrations. So yeah. with your illustrations, do you start with a, like a pencil outline first or do you just go straight and get the water or go straight with all the colours on the computer? Um, I do a sketch. Well, mm. <laughs> squeaky voice there. Do a sketch and then I do a plain background on the shape and then I do the colour over the top. I'll actually, see, I'll send you a video so you can see what I do. Yeah, that would be great, actually. But good, good to show everyone yeah. what your little, yeah. what your method is and how yeah. you illustrate. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of kids yeah. I basically love basically build up the layers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Because I, I know for me, I'm, I'm a really, really lazy illustrator. I just do one quick thing and, <laughs> and just colour it in and that's it. Move on, next one. But I know that other amazing illustrators like yourself, it takes time and, and as you said, you build up the layers and then it almost yeah. as you're telling the story of the of the picture as it comes up and you know, start yeah. very simply and then you get at the detail, at the background, add everything else and that's like yeah. developing the story. Yeah, yeah. I, li I like yeah. that. So now you live on a farm. What's the best yes. thing about living on a farm? Peace and quiet. Yeah. And being able to... And being able to just go out anywhere and not be bothered by people or noise or yeah so it's it's a therefore as you said before it's a great place to get ideas because you're not nothing's too noisy you're not being bombarded yeah, no. with all this living in the city stuff but you can walk outside and into the fresh air and hear the birds and the, the trees yeah. rustling and things like that yeah no yeah. It's, it's a beautiful place yeah i, th yeah. I think um Every child should be able, be able to live on a farm at least one time in their life, I think. Yeah. They go chase sheep. Do you, have, do you have sheep and cattle and things? 
Um, at the moment, we don't. We've, we've got a few sheep, but my husband's leasing the farm at the moment. Oh, he's he's do, do, trying to retire. So, Do the sheep have names? No. No. <laughs> we have had we have had some that had names. We had um, Columbus. Columbus the sheep. Did it go off exploring? Uh, yeah, he used to go around the garden exploring. Uh, yeah, because it was it was a pet lamb. It was a, a pet. So you you you're always going to keep him as a pet, weren't you? You weren't going to look at Columbus and go, "Hmm, let's get no. some vegetables to go with." Columbus. I was very upset when he. When he went out into the mob, I mean, that was, you know. Oh, that was it. That was it. <laughs> but that's one of the things about living on a farm, isn't it? It, it teaches you yeah. about life and about how animals yeah. are raised and, and stuff like that. And perfect for, for writing stories. So mm. that's, mm. I like that. I like that. Now, what is one piece of advice you would give to aspiring writers and illustrators? Uh, don't wait as long as I did. So basically, if you're young and, and you, you really want to write or you really want to draw, go and do it. Yes, yes. Because I, I wanted to be an illustrator from being about nine years old. And I did art at school and I did English. I was good at English and I did all that. But then my mother said, no, illustrating is not a job. You're not doing that. So I had to go and do archaeology. Yeah, so, you, and then, you did archaeology. Oh, that's a, that's, that's awesome. Are you still an archaeologist? Um, well, I, I have a metal detector and I go out doing metal detecting. So ah. I don't know the, uh, don't think that's archaeology really. It's no, that's not quite a, a scientific. <laughs> was it prospecting, isn't it? Not what I do. I, I'm not looking for gold. I'm looking for historical stuff. Ah, okay. Have you have you found like a few coins and pennies and things like that? Yes, yes, I found lots of stuff. Because wow. round here was just over the road. We've got a historical house that was founded in 1836, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, and our farm was part of that farm originally. So we find like I just over the creek there. I found a shilling from 1856. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. I think I think every kid would love to discover something like that. Oh, it's an old ancient coin. Yeah. No, it's, it's good. Yeah. So so you're an archaeologist. Now you're a children's author, but but you wanted to write and illustrate when you were a child. And your mother yes. said, No, it's not a real job. Yes. Well, yeah. I can tell everyone right now, writing and illustrating, as you know now, Katie, mm -hmm. is a real job. And you can actually yeah. make money from it. So there we go, yeah, kids. Get started. Get your pencils out. Get your crayons out. Get your whatever it is and start writing and illustrating. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Now, Katie, you've got a new book coming out next year. What's this one yes. about? Uh, this one's called Where Do the Stars Go? And oh. it's about a possum. Yeah. And, and what's and that? The and? Awake, and the possum's awake in the morning. And he looks out and thinks, where have the stars gone? And then all his friends, he, he's like, wow, well, he's got lots of friends. They tell him where they think the stars are, like, you know, they're down in the creek. And he goes down, looks in the creek, and sure enough, they're all stars twinkling. And he goes around finding stars all over the bush. And then his mother says, let's watch and see where they've come back from. And of course, they pop out of the dark. Oh, and he realises, oh, that's where they nice. come from. What what type of possum is he? Is he a ringtail possum or is it a brush uh, tail? Brush tail. Brush, brush tail. tail. Uh, they uh, brush tails. I used to have a brush tail living in my roof, and I uh, caught him one day in a in a in a mm. in a trap because I thought he shouldn't be living yeah. in the roof, and I wanted to move him onto the forest. And they're very vivacious animals, aren't they? They run yeah, around yeah. the cage and rrr, whereas well, we used to have a ringtail possum as well. And ringtails are oh. placid, they're quiet, they yeah. sit there with their big doe oh. eyes. But the mm. but the brush tails are, are much more active, aren't they? So I can see why you yeah, would have picked okay. a brush tail possum, because they okay. So that's coming what yeah. what month is that coming out next year? That comes out in May. In May. Okay. Fantastic. So we can all look forward to that. But in the meantime, we can get what colour is the sea. Now, what's the best thing about being an author illustrator? Oh, meeting kids, I think. 
I love going out and doing visits. And I was at the Awesome Arts Festival on in September. Oh yeah. And yeah, read the book to the kids and talked to them about it, and it was fantastic. And okay. they would have loved that. They would have thought that was the bee's knees. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. Okay, you ready for quick fire round? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. What's your favourite food? <gasps> strawberries. Strawberries. Ooh, strawberries. I like that. What's your favourite animal? And you can't say a koala or a possum. Uh, owl. An owl. Uh, a barn owl. owl. All owls. All owls. Have There's so many okay. different ones. I'm going to, I'm going to, I know a little known fact about barn owls, which I'm, you'll, you'll most probably know this one too, Katie. I had a barn owl on my property and the, I kept on hearing the sound of a child screaming in the middle of the night. And it, it made my blood curdle like, ah, and the sound would just pierce the night air. And then one day I saw in the early in the morning, what was making the sound and it was a barn owl. Yeah. Did you know that they make that noise? Oh, yeah, they make a horrible noise, yeah. Oh, it was just, it was the most frightening thing. I was up in bed, I was like saucers. <laughs> but it was a barn owl. Okay, what's the best place that you like to relax? Um, in my office, probably. You're, so when you're writing yeah, and you're illustrating? The drawing. Yeah. That's your happy, relaxing place? Yeah. Have the music on and, yep. Yeah. What music do you listen to? Um, a lot of Celtic music. Oh, Celtic Art music. music and folk it's songs from, and from, from Ireland and from Scotland. Ireland, and... Scotland, England, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So that puts you in the mood. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, what's your favourite book character ever? Um, I know, I've thrown this at you. Probably not one the kids... Yeah, no, probably not one that kids would know, though. It's, um... Jean Valjean from Les Miserables. Ah, I think some kids may have heard of Les Miserables. It may have, yeah, it may have. Yeah. But that's your favourite book character. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I like that. Look, Katie, thank you so much for spending time with us. We've got to know your books. We've got to know you. And that all the kids now can go and get What Colour Is The Sea Out. Now, that's by Fremantle Press and all libraries should yes. have it. Katie, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Josh. It's been good fun. Thank you.